What's up, y'all, and welcome into the Jack Vita Show. Sitting beside me is the great Miranda Rose Harrison from Deal or No Deal Island. Thank you, Jack. I'm excited to be here and speak to our guest, ooh, surprise guest today. New edition of Deal or No Deal Island Insiders, and we've actually we've got a pretty uh, jam-packed week here on the podcast because today we're going to speak with Miss Claudia Jordan, and we'll bring her in shortly. Uh, but we've also I'm going to talk with Jamil also on another podcast with Kim. So we're going to have Kim and Jamil, the hot That's new couple, right? Fun. Oh yeah, 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 the hot new couple on the streets. <laughs> um. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And then we also had the uh, recap with Brooke and Stephanie LaGrosa Kendrick from Traders and Survivors. She joined us to break down the show. Next week, we'll have exit interviews with the last remaining contestants in the final four. Brooke and I will have a recap. So there's a lot of content here on this channel. So make sure you guys are all subscribed to the Jack Vita Show here on YouTube. Turn on those notifications and you won't miss out on all the fun coverage that we have. Miranda, who are we talking to today? So we have a talk show host. We have an actress, a model, a businesswoman, and a reality television and radio personnel, Claudia Jordan. Hi. Hello. Hey. What's going on here? Hi, Jack. Hi, Miranda. Hey, girl. How is it? Good. You look, you know, I see you're all over the place. You are doing so much right now, and just for you to take some time and speak to us. I'm like super happy about that. No, anytime. I just was like, the lashes on before we went on because I, I, I was looking hot. I was just, I was out here trying to work out and try to stay looking youthful like you guys. So, you know, <laughs> but thanks for having me. Who are we talking Good about today? Who are we talking about? Claudia, let's talk a little bit about this show that it's really cool because you're an OG from the original Deal or No Deal show. Now you got to be on Deal or No Deal Island. Unfortunately, you were out pretty early. Uh, mm -hmm. You were the first person I interviewed from this cast. So now we're coming full circle right before the finale. First things first, like, how are you enjoying the show as a viewer? It's a really good show. And um, some of it I'm like, oh, I wish they would have listened to. Not that I'm the expert on all the game because obviously I'm still not there. So some people are playing a better game than I am but I don't know if they're doing themselves a favor or a service with how they are portraying themselves on television. There is life after your reality show and you have to live with that. You have to live with it. I haven't lasted 30 years in the business by going, you know, just all in on everything where you like, you don't care how you come off. You have to worry about that. You have to care. And only one person can win. Okay. One person can win. So the rest of us, I won't say we're losers, but you can still be a winner even though you didn't win the game, you know, by how you carry yourself. Like I, my phone has not stopped ringing since I got back. You know what I mean? Like it has not stopped ringing. You have to be someone that people want to be around. And I think this show is a great opportunity to show your character or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. And y'all know who I'm talking about. There's more than one, but there's a few that really play themselves on the show. And I wish they wouldn't have, because I think this is such deal. No deal wasn't shysty, you know, Right. It wasn't a shicey show. Deal or No Deal was a loving, like, it was like you wanted, you, you wished well. So I even said it when I was there. I'm like, this is not the game that I... You said it's a family show. It is. Yes. I, I get the claws coming out towards the end, but that's not going to make you win. That doesn't make you win. It does not make you win on this game. It doesn't. Yeah. Are, are you referring to the Night Owl Alliance? Some of them. I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed in some of them, actually, if I'm going to keep it a buck, you know, like I just was like, I didn't know it, was, it got that nasty and um, I don't like it. Um, I just don't like it. You Is know? there one segment like or one edit that you saw that was like, oh, wow, that's like, I just do not like that one. Well, like. Stephanie, I expect her to be like that because I feel like I, I caught her vibe early on. But actually, I rolled in with Amy and I'm like, Amy, don't make your game about everybody else. I know that's your girl, so I'm not trying to dog her out. But like, I liked her and I'm like, don't like the, the way America is, is responding to her isn't good. And I hate that for her because, like I said, I rode in the car with her. We bonded. Right. We're in the mud together. And then I'm seeing like all these 
Like, I don't think you win or you do well when you make the game about somebody else the entire time. Like, I did enough with me and Cam, right? And if I would have stayed and she would have stayed, that would have been the last of it. Like, we would, I would have gossiped on my chest and we would have been down. We would move on. But every single episode, it's rob, 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 rob. Like, like you're building his numbers up. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you don't have a chance to do that again. You don't have a second chance to do that again. And, like, America ain't really feeling that. You, you know what I'm saying? And I know it's easy to get caught up and, you know, it's a game and it's a lot of people haven't been on television before, but you will regret it later. You know, there's been times I've been on TV and I'm like, oh, I wish I could take that back. And yeah. trust me, it lives forever. It lives forever. You know, and I feel like sometimes don't let these shows take you out of your character. Some people, that's who they are. And some people, I think, were taken out of their character and they, they you know, I, I, I see what they say and it's like, it's harsh. that they, they are hard. Deal no deal fans. <laughs> wait, wait. Deal no deal island fans. Y'all go in. Y'all really go in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're uh, very true to it for sure. Yeah. So that's what I think. Um, I didn't like it. You know, like I don't think to me, Rob didn't do anything wrong to me except be successful. So like, why is it so much hate? Like, I like to surround myself with people that are good at this thing or that are successful not alienate them out the gate like why would you do that i would be like i would i think aaron did a really good thing by staying close and like all right let me get the game from one of the goats right instead of like making like let's get him out okay but then what then you have a target with the rest of y'all people over there like do you think those folks trust each other now after all of those conversations no okay i, I said a lot miranda what you think no 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 i mean like i i, I completely understand and i i see your view um i it's just, it was so much going on. And like right now, like they portray Amy as a complete bully. But you know, Claudia, that she's not. You know that she is like the most like non bully person. But in for fact, yeah, there have been moments like, you know, your back is pushed up against the wall. And I can't imagine if I were to have lasted longer, I probably might have showed my butt too, you know? Probably. Um, yeah, like, and I, I probably could have, and I would, you know, in those moments, sometimes we are pushed to a a moment to show our, our butts, and we all have that, um, but it doesn't make them the bad person, but there are people that, you know, have kind of taken that outside the game, as Claudia was, was saying, for sure. Yeah, like, I mean, uh yeah, girl, I be looking at the TV like, oh my goodness, I'm glad that I was back at the hotel eating lobster and crab with air conditioning <laughs> and pina coladas while they was fussing in the woods. And I mean, of course you want to stay longer. Of course you want to win the money. Of course you want to win. But the consolation prize is making some really good friends. And we really spent a lot of time. Like th Those of us that got booted off early, like me, Jamil, and, um, and Branson, we spent a long time together. <laughs> we done became family on that island. We saw the entire island because we were waiting one by one to see who would come home next. You know what I mean? And when some people, I remember when, when Nick came home, you know, and I, in his episode, wow, put off all that money and still go home. And Jesus, like he, I remember the first thing he said, we took him out to the bar where we're dancing on the bar, we're drinking, we're having fun. He says, wait, is this how y'all been living the whole time we've been in the woods? I said, yup. He was like, if I had known this, I would have got out early. I'm like, <laughs> right. Paradise. It right. was so fun. It really like was. big things of crab and, and uh, I mean, I can't even explain everything, but it was like, what, $23? Dollars. Dollars. For a whole entree. It was just insane. And then like the water taxis were like $2 here and there. And um, we yeah, it was paradise. We were in beautiful, clear, warm oceans, like frolicking in the waves while they were digging holes on the beach, going to the bathroom, porta potties, fighting off snakes. Um, so, you know, hey, there's two different experiences of Deal No Deal Island, but right. they're both fun. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's positivity in both of them. Absolutely. Now, with the with whoever had um, made, you know, when you, you Kim and Rob, you guys are all kind of known already, and Kim's known. Well, kind of like in sequester. So I, I felt yeah, like it was what we're not about to do is lie about the. I don't remember. I have never heard that show before. Okay, well, when there was a moment at camp where we people were paying targets on people's backs, who was the three? Was it Jamil? Then it was like three yeah, people. 
Okay. Yeah. It was, so it was three people that people so were like. So Jamil won a game show before yeah. he was on the, the Yeah, show. he like won, I think Family Feud or something, right? Like he went, won a bunch of money and he accidentally. It wasn't Family Feud. I can't remember the name of it. It was something okay. he did with his sister though. Yeah. It, yeah, there's a couple shows he did. Yeah, so basically, uh, so you're talking about the night that we all introduced ourselves and said what we Yeah, said. And, then that, and then somehow it became a target on your guys' back. Somebody was talking about it and which I never saw that that should be a target. I think I remember saying in confessionals, which they probably didn't show was that shouldn't be a target. That's like so unfair. Like wait to see how they do in challenges and something or, yeah. but, you know, yeah, that was another thing I had with Amy and, um, and she ended up crying. They didn't show it on the show, but we talked about it. Cause I had heard that she was going around telling people like that it should be left to the average Joe's and the, uh, people who hadn't been on television before that, and that she Googled my net worth. And that really bothered me because um, I'm giving up something to be there too. I'm away from my friends and family and life, and we're all kind of on equal footing. We, we've we never seen the show before. So no one really has an advantage on the show, even Rob. You know, I mean, he may be good at like keeping a poker face, but like we're all on a new show. So when you're the first season, you are not privy to any other information. Like we don't know the ropes. We're all learning as we go. Yes, I was on Deal and Odeal and I was good helping other people with their game. But when it came to my game, I made the wrong decision. So like no one has an advantage. My net worth, no matter if it's $1.5 million or $10 million, it has nothing to do with what kind of player I'll be on the show. And I just wish that wasn't a thing because it kind of put a, a, a bad taste in my mouth. Like... Like you're being punished for being successful, but I had a, I, we, and we did have a talk and we talked it out and, you know, I kind of made her understand, like, I, I, I do this by myself. You have a lease, you have a husband, you have a support system. I do all this by myself and I don't think I should be penalized for, for being a hard worker. So yeah. And that was the thing with Rob. I was starting to believe the hype too about him, like him being such a bad guy and we should go against him. And for five minutes I was with it, honestly. And then I went over to myself and I had a conversation with them myself and I was like, I can't believe I was about to drink the Kool-Aid. You're actually a pretty cool. I think Rob's cool. I like Rob. Yeah. I like Rob. Well, yeah. No, I mean, Rob's awesome. That's probably how Amy felt when you guys spoke. You know, she she probably, like, you kind of, if you don't have a target on someone's back, you're like, oh, well, let me just find a reason for it. But when you guys talked about it, she, I'd never heard your name in her mouth from that point on, but I did remember hearing who you are because I didn't know who you were. Yeah, yeah. Um, but and just learning that stuff about you, I, it wasn't like, oh wow, you know, like let's get her out. It was like, well, I kind of want to learn more about what you were doing. Like, how was it? Like, I used to watch Deal or No Deal. You know, it was like my one of my favorite game shows. So I saw it more as like opportunity to kind of know other people. But definitely understand like how you can get that moment of like wanting to find a reason to paint a target on your back. I'm like day one, I, like we're I know. getting to know each other. Like, and then me, and you had a great. We had some great moments in the in the in the bus, in the yeah. mud. And I I just think with these shows, it's just best to kind of get to know the person for their own values, for their own personality. Because we can make judgments based off of what someone else whispers in our ear and be so wrong. You don't be so wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, what about so Rob is someone who's one survivor. He came very close to winning the amazing race. Like he's obviously great at these things. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm curious, cause you were talking a little bit about playing with Rob. Would you have, and I think you said something that was very interesting, Claudia, which was basically once Rob's out, then who's the target when Rob's in there, he's going to kind of have the, the guns aimed at him for lack of mm -hmm. a better word. Mm -hmm. Everyone's going after him. So if you keep Rob around that offers some protection to people, so I'm curious to know, had you won that night of Deal or No Deal and you stayed, you stuck around and you were up until this point, were you going to ride with Rob the whole way? Did you see other people that were closer with Rob that you would have wanted to get out? Were you going to try to get Rob out at a certain point? How was, what's the long-term play for you? Well, unfortunately, I didn't have that opportunity, but if I would have been around longer, I would have probably rode with Rob as long as I could until the end. I, I, I think it's like kind of like some people like, let me pick a person who I deem as physically weak, like Aaron or Amy to go up against. And I think that's kind of mean. Like, obviously, that's not what keeps people in the game. And it's like, a, it's the wrong assumption. You know, I think you, it could be anyone's game. It literally could be anyone's game. Um, but I, I, I choose the people that I feel peaceful around. Like, I don't want that kind of environment. And that's kind of why I was ready to go when I left. 
Um, like I, I, I was over like, I'm like already y'all. Okay. So no, uh, I would pe- pick people that I want to like, I want to rock with. And I want to see with me in the top three where I legitimately could say, you know what? I left my home. I was gone for a month and wh- whoever of us wins, I'm happy for us. You don't want to be against someone that you cannot stand. And it yeah. just feels nasty. Cause I think when you're emotional like that, you may make some more more um mistakes and missteps you know but i would have liked to have uh, i i really like jordan i loved her personality um I, I really was rooting for her um i really like rob he was very peaceful of course miranda um i thought nick was cool although i don't know if he liked me at first but we ended up becoming real cool and that's my book <laughs> now I loved jamil jamil brought me a, a he was such a a good guy to have around for it for morale. And I think to me, those things are important. I think there's two ways to win. <clears throat> knock everybody off and just like, who cares? I don't care. Anything goes. I think you're a savage if you're like that, being away in the woods from your no phone, no nothing. Or you can say, you know what? I'm going to pick the people that I want to see with me at the finish line and like be, may the best man or woman win in the end. That's what I would have wanted to do. Maybe that's not as cutthroat and maybe that's not as good television, but I don't think everything needs to be evil and mean. I really don't. I don't. I, I mean, that would have been cool. Like, be fun. Yeah, like, right? like, I'm not, I wouldn't want to try to go to the end with somebody I hate. It would have been like an epic move, but it would be so cool to, you know, be like, let's do this. Like, you know. Like you and Amy were cool. Wouldn't it have been yeah. for you if like you two were the last two standing, right? I know. I and then know. you'd be like, that's my girl. Cause it's like, it's really no love lost. It's like, and then you know, that's your girl. She's going to probably slide you something or take you on vacation or something. Oh, oh, oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but when it's like someone you act like, can't stand or it just came about in a yucky way it just it's a victory but it's a victory with a asterisk next to it like <laughs> like a yucky uh, you know yeah. Yeah. the <laughs> fact that you and rob both have a background in tv being established names did that bond you guys a little bit to be like okay like if one of us goes down they'll probably come after the other type of thing yeah yeah, I definitely knew that. I didn't know that. In the beginning, I didn't think it was a big deal. I thought me sharing that with everyone, like, all right, let me just get out the way. I was on the show. Maybe I can help you out y'all's games. And I didn't realize that it was being put on my back. And then some people came, the target, and some people came to me and started telling me. I was like, wow, already? Okay. And we had to talk about it. He's like, you know, if, after me, it's, it's for the girls, it's you. And I'm like, yeah, I didn't really realize that first, <laughs> you know, but um, it kind of sucks, though. Like, I don't know, but I'm not like that in my real life. Like I don't, I'm not, I've never been the girl. Like I want to be the pretty girl in my group and just me. And then all my minions, I like to hang with other baddies and girls that got it going on. I I think it makes us stronger as a group. I really do. I think, but I'm confident though. I have confidence. I'm like, I can still shine in a group with other people. You know what I mean? Like I don't have that loser mentality. I kind of feel like that's a little bit loserish. I really do. Period. I know that's harsh, but I have a a sharp tongue. Y'all already know that. That's why you're Claudia Jordan. Like, that's, right. <laughs> that's literally, that's what, what makes you who you are. And we love you for that. Thank you. And, you know, it was good. I, I'm glad that, you know, I hated that Miranda, when Miranda came home because that meant she was out the game. But I was happy to see um, one of the faces of the people I really like. And then we got to really hang out and talk. And, you know, we was at the beach. Every, we spent some really good quality time, like behind the scenes of Deal and Deal, like when you're off is almost as like good as the show as well. Like there's things stuff that happens there too. You know what I mean? Yeah, we got to hang out, do chocolate tours. You know, it was really cool. I got to know her even more, and it wasn't no like animosity. Like I knew she wasn't trying to blindside me just to get some extra chocolate. Okay. No, matter of fact, so we, it was were, like, fun. we were in the mud together, and she had a case that was like what was 30, it? Thirty thousand. It was low. It was like the one that Aaron ended up with, I think. It was so low, and she helped me out. And I that was the moment I was like, oh, wow, people are helping people out. Because I, I, started, I started out feeling like it was going to be cut through, like no one's going to help anybody. And then she spoke up, and she's like, here, I have a case, but here, what's your case? Oh, here's a higher case. And I was like, oh, my heart, thank you. Because I had grabbed 200 and 250, so I was like, well, we, I figured we're in the, in the six figures. We should be good. And then I didn't realize it'd be million, 750, but we, we were towards the bottom, but we were both safe. Yeah, like I was, there was a moment where Joe was like, Miranda, you're at the bottom, and there was only a couple left. And then Aaron, right next to me, was the one who got put in bottom two. We talked all the time, though, about if Branson didn't make that move and switch his case and, like, right. The whole game, like every episode, something happened that would have changed the trajectory of the entire game. Do you remember 
the situation between Branson and Stephanie? There was there's something with them. The um, their cases, or one of the two thought their cases was switched. Oh yeah, she was like yeah, she was already starting that day. And I don't know if it was her or Branson, but Branson was like. I, I don't know. It was so much going on. Like they thought that somebody switched their case and then Branson went out to go get another case and then he dropped the case and then he winked at us. And then when he winked at us, I think is when we figured out he wasn't really yeah. mm-hmm. trying for himself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then he was actually going to help Kim out. And then Kim, um, that first episode is just filled with so much. <laughs> That was quite an. Ep- I was like, "Whoa, we got a hit here!" Because like it was yeah. so bright. Like it it, 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 Unfortunately, the lesson was, no good deed goes unpunished. Because the very person that you helped was responsible, pretty much, for you getting out. Like that led to your demise, you know. And then same with me, trying to like help to keep the peace and protect uh, Lisa. I want to blow up the plan, or let me oh my God. over here. Don't change the plan. Don't change the plan. And it blew up. Like, it. that's kind of the lesson of the game. And so. I feel bad for Dawson. Dawson had, for the very first episode, he had immunity. And because of all this, whatever, what was going on, um, he gave it up, uh, you know, which kind of might have helped him in, you know, in the long run. Um, but it does suck that, like, you know, there was another time where Stephanie could have had immunity and she didn't because of something that just went astray. Oh. So there's... So many times where somebody could have had the immunity and it just didn't happen. Oh, uh, I wish, I wish Dawson didn't do that because that empowered Kim out the gate and it made the four, first four episodes all about her. Really, it did. Because then it would have been Kim and Aaron. And then I wonder, I feel like Dawson would have put Aaron up against the banker regardless because I feel like Dawson has the soft side for Kim before Aaron mm-hmm. already. Yeah. So it would have been them bottom two and... Yeah. Well, they weren't even talking to Aaron until he got in that position. Then all of a sudden, everybody was on his in his face, and it was like I did see that. All of a sudden, everybody was kissing his butt, and I was like, "Wow!" I just sat back and watched. Like, look at how fake this is. Yeah. I, they were not speaking to him like that until he got that power. Jack, I'm giving you the real tea right now because you know I'm unfiltered. That is exactly like all of a sudden it was like <sighs> everyone on the island, and then somebody even had to say, "I think Claudia was like, you, hey, you know, Aaron, you should." just like take a breather and like take some time for yourself. Cause you're going to be the one going up against the banker. Uh, you were, know? It, it, was, was it was like, it was like a little bit embarrassing how much it was happening. Like I was like, y'all weren't even speaking to him from the beginning of the game. Then all of a sudden Aaron is the man. And that's the dynamic of that show. Like yeah. the person that is going to play up against the banker, everyone wants to go kiss their butt because I, I don't want you to take me out if you win. So, and I didn't do it. And then finally we just were at the table together and we just, it naturally, I said, you know, I'm not, I haven't come up to you to, to campaign. He goes, I've noticed that. And I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm overwhelmed. And I was like, I see what's happening. Like everyone's in your face right now. So I'm, I'm going to sit back. And when you want to talk, we can talk. And he said, I appreciate it, but we didn't get, get real tight. But you know, I did, I felt bad for the kid. Cause you could tell he's like socially, you know, he's kind of shy. And so it was a lot for him the first time. I mean, his, and for anybody to have to go up against the bank for the first night. And he did good. I, like, oh my, and I, I, you know, I knew I was, I wasn't famous. I didn't have a lot of money. So I was like, okay, I think I'm good. You know, I didn't even talk to Aaron. I, I think I did have conversations with him, but I never even like went up to him to talk to him about any fear of mm-hmm. being up against the banker. But man, he was, he was overwhelmed and being, having to be going up against the banker, you, it's just so much going on. And I, for him to beat it, it was awesome. That was so cool. And then he sent home Branson. I wonder if he didn't have people in his ear about Branson who he would have truly sent home. Right. Who do you think he should have if he, if he didn't? Rob? No, I'm just kidding. No, I mean, <laughs> and Branson knew who Rob was. So, like, but I just, I yo, I don't know if it would have made the show. I think the show wouldn't have been as good without Rob, to, to no. be honest. He's but, a star. He's definitely needed. And yeah, so, he, I know people don't like it, but you need a couple celebs. I think he has a following and it, it's been good for the show. He's very good. He has a following. People yeah. know yeah. how he knows who, like people know who he is, you know? Oh, and he was, he was good at his game. I hope that Branson does and Jamil and, uh, you know, they cause Jamil was the second one to go. Right. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I, you know, I hope they get their chance. Like they really didn't even, you know, somebody just booted them out. It's not like they lost against a banker or got, you know, 
didn't do good at a challenge or something. So I do feel bad for them. And even Branson, I knew Branson would be very helpful throughout the show. He's in such good shape. That guy's like a gymnast. Like, yeah, I do. Oh gosh, he like, could do so many pull ups, and he was he probably would have done well in like the at climb. the maze. Mm-hmm. At the maze, he would have just been probably doing those hurdles, like yeah. him against ba- Boss and Rob. I mean, it would have just been so much more animosity towards the men. I think. Mm-hmm. So why did they why did they take him out first, Claudia? <laughs> <laughs> so Kim and Aaron were about to be in the bottom two. Kim was struggling in the mud. We all actually struggled in the mud. It wasn't just Kim, but she was really struggling. And she brought back a case like 7,000. Then the banker says, hey, if you if you go back into the mud, I'll give you $10,000, with, you know, whether you stay in the game or not. It's yours to keep. That's your personal offer money. So Kim went back, like, I might as well. And then Branson went in, like, I'm just going to help this old lady at least leave with something, thinking, oh, she'll probably be out first. Well, there was a... A, t- a, a lower amount case and then one case was a steal you don't know which one of the two red cases like you don't know what's what in the red cases so he went and got the red case brought it really close to the platform and then acted like oh i'm so tired i can't <laughs> go further and we were like i was like brent and then he winked i was like i know you are not doing this right now and so <laughs> yeah. he did that and then she went back in everybody was hungry. he did this yeah <laughs> she got the you'll case. see it in the first episode and then when we see it's a steal, he was like, oh, my God, what have I done? Yeah, what have you done? So that changed, and now she has the power. She put the offer out there, like, whoever has a million, tell me. I won't I won't get you out of here. And then Dawson did, and it changed, it changed the trajectory of the game. Wait, so he didn't want the steal, so he just wanted to get her a low yeah. case value. With he wanted to get her $10,000 and a low case. Like, she had a low case anyways, but he wanted her to go home with 10000 He thought, oh, poor little old lady. She ended up outplaying all of us. So, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Kill a Kim. <laughs> That's one of the nicknames. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I want to know, Claudia, and we'll, we'll come back to Dondi in a little bit. I'm really curious how this show compares to other shows that you've gotten to be a part of throughout your illustrious career on <laughs> TV. I mean, it's really hard because in other shows, if you have a hard day, you know, you can go back to your hotel room. You can call a familiar face, a loved one, your <laughs> boyfriend or your ex or your friends and just, oh, mom, and be like, mom, it's crazy. Like, this happened. This, you just have to deal with it. You only have the people that you're thrown together with and they're not people you know. You know what I mean? So there's no familiarity. There's no one that's going to have sympathy for you. Or you don't know if they're playing a game, if they really do. Like, you, it's like my game the whole time. You really don't know if someone is being for real or not. I mean, I just take people for their 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 word at first, but I get burnt with that too. Um, so yeah, you don't have that. The physical challenges I thought were really hard. Um, the first one with the mud, I could not believe that that was the first day. I was like, you have got to be kidding me. The first day I knew I wasn't gonna win. I said, oh no, they got us in mud with scorpions. They, they are out of their minds. And so Miranda <laughs> deals with that. I don't deal with scorpions. <laughs> oh, and I thought I had it. A- Correct with my boots, but I had 10 extra pounds on each leg in that mud <laughs> and every, all my personal training and, and working out before the show is flashing back before my eyes. There was a moment where I think I laid in the mud for a minute. It wasn't that hard. It was so hard. I had to lay down because even the cases, when you're trying to lift, I mean, you're dragging weight because there's water in these cases and mud. And then you hear some, I think Nick's like, I hope there's no alligators in here. <laughs> Yeah, no, that, that challenge was really hard. And then you start to realize like the little things that you, you miss, like um, like being able to have a snack in the middle of the day, you know? Oh, yeah. And we ate and that's it. Like you got your breakfast, your lunch, your dinner, and there was no, let me go to my room and get some chips. No, like that's that's it. Like you, you kind of strip down, you know, to, and I think that's what also gives you a little bit more anxiety or more, maybe you're not in your normal, right, like clear mind because- you know, looking back, you're like, oh, I should have done that. I should have done this. But you're also, you don't have your comforts of home. You know, you don't have any of that stuff. So, you know, it's, and then you're just wondering what, you have no idea what's happening in the world. Like, we're not privy to news, nothing. There was no communication with our family. Like, you had to really sign off, you know. So, that was difficult. We were with our family. Yeah, absolutely. The 13 of us. And if we were having to fight each other, we have to. We're brothers and sisters, right? Yeah. So- 
did at home. So I was like, yeah, it did suck having to stay away from for like a whole month. Like I was like, am I going to come home to a missing persons report? <laughs> right. <laughs> Miranda, one of the first days, she had to kill a scorpion in our quarter potty. <laughs> they told us, uh, don't before you sit down or squat or whatever you do, make sure there's no snakes or scorpions in the in the. Sure enough, there, and we had this guy follow us around too. He was we call him the Snake Daddy, but he was a snake wrangler, and uh, he was like a shadow of us. He was always kind of in. Be- behind us always making sure that there's no snakes because we were in the jungle guys okay there was like you know there we we weren't 100 percent protected there could have been a, a monkey come down and hit us with a rock if if it really wanted to uh so it was just it was incredible see and, and at nighttime you know the porta potties are far from camp so you had to take a lantern yeah. and walk down this path and you with would lantern see- guys a lantern and sometimes they would go out and you would see a snake path, like a the imprint of a snake in the sand that you, you may have just missed. And you have to walk through the woods and get to the porta potty. And then sometimes people said, you know what, I'm not even using them anymore. We're just gonna dig a hole. Like we were like cats in a litter box at one point. Like so, I mean, listen, I, <laughs> Wait, I, Miranda, real quick, I gotta know, going back to this, you killed well, a scorpion. Was this Miranda in action? She's an exterminator in real life. So was this something where it was like someone else wanted to use the porta potty? Like, oh my god! I think it was like if, it like, was... if Nick or Dawson like called Miranda and Miranda's the exterminator, <laughs> she has to go like kill the scorpion for them. Yeah, well, me and my me and my girl, you know, we had to go to the bathroom, and I think even Boston Rob was <laughs> around too uh, when we opened it up and saw the scorpion. And there was a moment where I think he even tried to touch it, and I was like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, ever since then we killed it, and we were always checking um, in our tents. There would be some what was it, dragonflies, but I said that was good to keep them because it, the dragonflies eat mosquitoes mm-hmm. and they don't, they don't harm anything. Um, I mean, Amy was even getting good with the insects. There was this huge beetle and she was just picking it up, trying to scare people with it. Really? Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> I was proud. I was like, you know, you think you want to know Nick's pretty scared of the bugs. Oh, the yeah. big guy, the big muscular guy. Of course. Dawson's is. decent, I think. I don't know. I can't remember. I, he doesn't like snakes. Miranda, remember that night we were about to go to Temple and we were in the tent and they kept us there really long and I friggin' snapped. Yes. A bug that was like a foot. It was it, yes. like, for real, it was this big. It was like a big of a moth, like this big or praying mantis. And it was in yes. the, and I lost it. It was I like a thick bug, but like thick. It's like it was really like on steroids for sure. And she was like, No, are you kidding me? You have talent out here right now. You get a gift. Like, this is how you treat talent. I got real <laughs> super. I was looking at Claudia like, Yeah, let's go. Because we couldn't talk, talk. Yeah. And so, and, and to their defense, of course, Deal and Ordeal Island, they were great to us. But it's the first season. So, like, everyone's kind of learning as we go what's in the jungle. You know what I mean? Like, how they should, like, <laughs> keep us in the holding areas, but it took a little bit longer that day, right? And we were mic'd and we're not supposed to talk to each other in between, like only on camera. So we're like, we can't talk. Right. I'm hot, I'm tired, I miss wine and ice cream and everything, yeah. not, being, cream. not being itchy. And I just lost it. I was like, like get us in a bus right this now. This is not how you treat talent. There's a perfectly good air conditioned bus right there. Why are we not in it? And I was like, I freaked out. I had a moment and I never have diva moments, but I did have a moment. And the next day we were, we, they started making us wait in the air conditioned bus. And I was like, I felt like the Rosa Parks of Deal and No Deal Island. <laughs> I, yo, I was like, hey, we got to keep this girl. We got to <laughs> keep her. Oh my gosh. I think there was a moment. Um, <laughs> well, I think it was Amy. Somebody was begging for Red Bull, right? And um, the next day we actually, every time we had Temple, because it would be like late at night, you yeah. know? Lately. After we do a, an excruciating challenge, um, but the Red Bull man, it, that was awesome. They, they did, and they 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 really did try to like you know get us some things that we needed and we asked for. And I I I, I you guys say, had all your medications and like yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, we had to take medicine before we went because when you do a show like this, you have to take. Oh yeah, you, we. Had to- 
Mm-hmm. Malaria medication for like a couple weeks before you go. Oh yeah, malaria. <laughs> off of it halfway because like it's worst. Yeah, it makes you have weird dreams and like it makes you have be moody and stomach issues. Yep, you're, to have stomach issues. But I mean, like if you have like I'm I I have my thyroid taken out. I have uh I had Graves disease. Really? I take yes. I have to take levothyroxine, which is the generic for synthroid, every single day. They would let me take that on. Of the show. course. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Your safety. I mean, it does say in the contract, you may die. But, you know, you, they will let you take your medication. Just we tried to get liquor. And they was not letting us have no alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we Jamil, it was me and Jamil all the time with that. We kept trying. And who else was it trying to do? <laughs> Amy wanted her wine. Yep. And yeah. Oh, and Amy made her wine. She made some hooch on the island. Are you serious? Yeah, she got that fruit. You know our little canisters we had. We had we just put some fruit in there, and she <laughs> she fermented it, and she 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 did a good job. And, and then we had showers, but they were cold. So like, yeah. but I want people to know, like, don't go thinking that you're gonna be in a hotel, and it's like it's no, this is real deal. So you got to be ready for this. You know, you yeah, the humidity is no joke. Like to go to sleep, sometimes our bedding would be kind of wet. Yeah, um, there there are things. As butt cream, that will be a regular thing that you'll use. Butt cream? <laughs> butt cream, yes. Butt rashes. At oh, work. oh, there were some butt rashes. I think some people had. Them. Oh, oh, I, yeah. I mean, and <laughs> what was it? The sand fleas, right? Oh, I got bit by sand fleas. I had 100 bites in one day. Right. So there are some things that you may have to just ignore. <laughs> so here's a, here's a fun question for you, Claudia. Here's Miranda, who is a rookie as it relates to TV. Um, first of all, what'd you think her first go on things? What, how'd you like watching her? And then, uh, I got to follow up to that after that. <laughs> I think Miranda, uh, didn't get as much camera time as she should have. I thought she was very cute and charming and adorable. And I thought she would get a, I thought they would have like really showed her a lot. Cause she's, you know, one of the prettier girls on the show and yeah. you are, you're, you're <laughs> a very beautiful girl. And like, they should have shown you a little bit more. So maybe they're thinking about bringing you back because, you know, for the, the camera time you didn't get because I think you're fun. And I, and that's the thing. But, you know, when you have such a large cast and, um, you know, they're spreading the camera time around, they can't, they miss a lot of stuff that's really great moments. And that's just the nature of television. You know, it's full, it ends up being, what, 48 minutes or something like that, 47 right. minutes. So, right. that's her episode, so you can't get everyone's moments. I think she did great. I can see other shows they should call her. She's not a diva. Uh, any ideas of, of shows that'd be good for her? Uh, uh, that's pretty enough to, she could have been on regular deal. She could have been on deal and no deal. I think oh. she, she could, I think she could be on some other reality shows. Um, let me see. You're, you're down in Florida, right? Yeah. Yeah. Don't give them my address though. That was <laughs> I think someone should write the show or create it. And I can actually do this. Actually, we can submit this and we can pitch it together. Right now. Oh, hot, okay. hot exterminators. <laughs> we send them to the most bug infested areas and and then we <laughs> torture us it's like below deck but it's like intense and stuff like that like we just follow the social <laughs> aspect of it because we I, you're the first exterminator that i ever met like that i know you're my only exterminator friend and that's a fascinating life like this pretty girl that could easily be some professional athlete's girlfriend or wife is out here <laughs> uh, stomping on, uh, on on scorpions saving the day for the big strong men I can see it. I can tell no, you. oh my God. You should see one time I got a call to a firefighting place for mice. And I guess they didn't assume that it was going to be a girl. And so I show up. I'm like, so where's the mice? Where, where, where's these rats you're talking about? And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, somebody called for a mice. They're like, oh, n- no. Are you the person? I'm like, yeah, where are they at? And you're like, oh, n- no, never mind. We, we're all good. We got it. And I was like, and I had to tell my boss. My boss was like, are you kidding me? They were complaining the whole time. And then now they just say they can take care of it. They want to impress you, so I'm telling them. I was trying to impress them. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we also could put Miranda on the Bachelor Bachelorette, I think. Yeah. We were trying to find Miranda Love on that island, but you know, the, the, not the, on Love the, Island though. <laughs> no, but like yeah, something else. Well, she's the star. She gets the pick. I don't want no one. She. I don't want my girl being one of 25 girls being picked. I want her to be the picker. Right. Now she's a reality show vet, so she, you know she's. So like we now. need, we need a show, and we have to call it like 
for for love or bugs or something like that. Love or bugs or love love bugs. Love like love bugaboo. Love. Yeah. And then when the guy gets dumped, they like it'd be like old school Nickelodeon. They've got like a a tub of like worms or something. Slime. Dump on, yeah. Dump on the guy. I would love to embarrass him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then maybe she, if she wants the guy to stay, she hands him like a fly swatter or something. You, you move on to the next round instead of a rose. It's a. Oh no! I can't. I gotta keep it somewhat <laughs> feminine. Here you go, buddy. Yeah, how, about, how, about when, how about when when I want the guy to leave, I swat him. Oh, okay, that's that's a little violent. <laughs> go with that as well. <laughs> I like that better. <laughs> What'd you think of uh, so Miranda had in her episode is episode five. So shortly, I think it was right after we had you on. I think you were you know you were three. Mm-hmm. She was five. Mm-hmm. So Aaron goes to her, and Aaron's trying to use her as a pawn in this big plan. Oh, yeah. And Miranda's just like, "Screw that! I'm gonna turn the tables on him and take out his top ally." Yeah. Pretty good. What'd you think of that? Pretty good. I TV, that was, good strategy. Uh, I thought that was good TV. Um, it was very memorable. She went out with a bang. Like, I'm a fan of going, listen, it's okay to go out early. Just go out with a bang where it's memorable. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey. I, that's what I like. Because you could be on there one episode and be, and be memorable. Or two or three and be memorable. So I thought that was kind of cool. And Aaron, to me, like, I never really knew, like, if he was trustworthy or not. Like, some days right. he was, sometimes I thought he wasn't. So I'm not mad at that. I don't, I don't look at Aaron as this poor, helpless, you know, this delicate guy that you just, everyone has to just, you know, be nice because he's so, you know, he's like, he's not, no, <laughs> he's, he's tough. He's, like, he knows what he's doing. So yes. I'm okay. Like, I think he's not to be babied. And I thought that was a good move. I personally liked Alyssa. I know there were a lot of girls that didn't like her, but I liked her. She didn't do anything wrong to me. And um, so I thought that was like a good TV. I thought that was a good move. She did the best. I was just watching a little bit of your episode. You did the best you could do with what your board was. You only have one low amount left. The chances are you had a big amount in your case and you did. Like yeah. you, you were kind of a million five hundred. Yeah. You were doomed to like you were doomed that not to not make a good deal. So you did the right thing. I'm glad you took the money. Me I'm- too. Because like there was a moment where I was like, you know what? I'm here to go hard. But then I was like, well, also I'm I came here with a gold and I came here with people who I want to help out also, not just myself. So I didn't want to be Greedy, and then I was like, "Well, I'm also coming home with more than forty thousand mm-hmm. dollars." So I put all that in in bay, and and even with Alyssa, like I, uh, you know, targeted uh, Alyssa and Aaron because their alliance was so, where it was so strong, it was getting stronger than Rob and Aaron's, and I was like, I felt like everyone was kind of pertaining to Rob, which that would have probably been the only moment if I would have won, that I could have gotten Rob out to. Mm-hmm. So you know, now that I think about it. Um, it was, if I would have won, it would have been, you know, I might've, let's say I did go this out, but there would have been so much controversy about like, why didn't I get Rob out? He was the only one there. So there's just so much that could have happened. So I'm just so grateful that I was able to at least do my game of deal or no deal, which is a dream come true. Yeah. And then, you know, be able to be at my first show and walk home with some money. Yeah. That was fantastic. I mean, they didn't show my game. I got off at 20, but yeah. Down. And I was like, oh, you got a personal offer? Yeah, I turned it down because it was so early in the game. What was the off? Not like he was saying, like, what was it up to? The pot? 7,020. I'm like, get out of here with that nonsense. Right. Like, why did he offer that so early? Oh, so, uh, yeah, I know. Because I, I, you're always like, okay, do you want me to get out? Like, what, like, what was in your case that you had? So, my case I picked had the 500,000. And then the other case had the million was nine. My number on deal and deal when I first started was nine and one. Oh, I, I feel like that was doomed either way. Like, you know what I mean? Like I should have kept those last two cases in play, but it would have still been a, a tricky decision. But I, I felt it too. I, I knew I felt I was gonna go home that night. I thought I was kind of somber in my episode. And I was like, and Rob was like, do whatever you gotta do to keep yourself here. I said, yeah. no. I'm going to just build a pot. I'm out of here. I'm ready to go. And he was like, no, we need you. Like, he wanted me to stay. He's like, because he took a deal early till he could say. He yeah. He was building the pot. Like, he was like, nah. I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. How much did he put in? Like, 15000 like 40, 49000 right? Oh, he, but he, Which is the least, but he did it, it did keep him in the game. Yeah, like, he 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 did what was right for him. That's what and the pot is, kept getting bigger, too. Yeah. It did. This is what makes it confusing, though, because, like, unlike regular deal and no deal, like, normally what is a sound decision in the game, it's not for this. You can like Nick made a fantastic like. Come on, he took four point four million, 
And right. then home because his case has 4.5. That is like, oh. And he didn't get a personal offer. I, you know, and then with, it, I was so intrigued on who they offered it to. Because they offered it to, like, and I would assume it would have been Aaron. They would have gave him, tried to give him something. Or at least Nick, you know. Because I felt like those were kind of like fan favorites in the moment. And the fact that they didn't even get a personal offer. Was it like every other person? Like, was there a pattern? What, Aaron didn't get any money, right? No. No. Wow, go that far, but he's they they position him so well that he'll probably get offered to be on stuff like they really made. Well, him. we can. I hope that he takes that opportunity because Aaron, you know, I hope that he it, it was a good experience and him and his girlfriend and they accept more opportunities because it would be so cool to be able to see him somewhere else. And so, I got another question here for you as it relates to what you did, Claudia, which was you allowed yourself. You're the first person that was like, all right. I'll play the banker. And then we ended up seeing this strategy be implemented only like a few weeks later by Rob. Mm -hmm. If not, it was maybe the next week. And it was basically like, I can control my own destiny yep. and I can send who I want to go home. Mm -hmm. So you were the first person that didn't seem to have any fear to go into that position. Mm -hmm. And then oh, everyone yeah. kind of copied you, right? Is that yeah. what happened? Yeah, I, I told him, I said, like, it wasn't he's going to send me to the banker and not going to put Rob, uh, Aaron. I told him, I said, I'm going in, I'm controlling it. I'm If I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out blazing where at least I have a fighting chance where I can control it. I'm a, I I hated how Jamil and Branson got sent home. That was so whack to me. Yeah. Like, I did not want that to be my story. Like, at least I get to play the game. At least it's on my terms. I control it. So, yeah, I told him. I said, you know, and then I, I wasn't scared. I kind of was just, I was in a mood that day. I was in a weird place that day. I really was. I felt like, I don't know. Well, I, you can, let's, be, let's be honest. Like, we're on an island. We're all girls. We all had our monthly. Yeah, I did. We were all together. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, we were moody, bleeding. Okay. We had... <laughs> And we were all aligned. So okay, since we're being honest, that's really why I left the game. I got my period. <laughs> I went right. to home and put a hot tub, a hot, a, a hot rag on my stomach. I was like, "This is no place to be having cramps in the jungle." And and the medicine. So what happened was, thanks, Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, like we are women. Like the medicine made it come made it come early and harder. Yeah. So like. What was normally bad in on um, home? The malaria medicine let's, home, that we all take. Like the day that I had to be dropped in the harness is when I got it. Yes. So I'm dropped in the harness and I was like, oh, oh, I was crying that day. Remember I was in tears. Yes, yes. we were all trying to help her out. Like, And, and no one was allowed to talk to me. So I was kind of having like a little breakdown. Like I was like, I was like hysterically crying that day. And yeah. had to still do that. So I, and when I cussed out Kim in the woods, it was all that was that really. It was like, F this. Yeah. I'm over this. Yeah. I don't want to go back to the hotel. This, I am miserable. If you think I'm going to go in the porta potty with scorpions with this situation going on, <laughs> no. Like, this was horrible. And I was like, ugh. I sometimes make bad decisions, though, at that time. You no, know? no, listen, little insider here. I was also on my period. And that's when I snapped at Kim. Like I did. It doesn't show it in the edits. Right after Claudia snapped at her, I went right behind them yes. as when standing on the stage. And I was like, I heard you were talking crap. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me you were talking crap. And she's like, I'm sorry. And I'm like, okay. And I like walked away and I was just like, well, that was it. And then like, literally I go up in the air and get dropped. And I actually get like hit on the head oh, and I have yeah. this huge bump. And like I have everyone feel it. I'm like, Kim, feel my head. Oh, my head. Yeah, I had a huge knot on my head. Got some sense knocked into me, you know, for a little bit. <laughs> everyone else, everyone else had to wear helmets after that. Uh, yeah, I want people to realize, like, yeah, wasn't that girls? two days? Wasn't yeah. that more than just a day? Yeah, that's. Was that because days. of the head injury? No. Well, no, the, the, we like, we ran on a light the day oh, round. Okay. Yeah, um, it was a 45 minute drive just to go there. I want people to know, like, for the women, we had it even harder than the men. Like, we still had to deal with that kind of stuff on top of the other inconveniences of being away. Like, imagine trying to get somebody to find you, get you some Tylenol or some Adderall when you're in the woods and you're, like, kind of out of – you're not really in, civilized, in civilization. You're, like, out there. 
And I'm just like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And then having me dropped in that harness, like with full on cramps, it was really painful. Like yeah. it was really, really, really painful. Crotch killers, those little things were. Yeah, yeah they open your crotch, a little equipment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jack, I'm sure that was not what you expected to talk about today. A little Deal No Deal Island insiders. Folks. Oh, it was insiders. Inside. That's that this part is, thing this was is all the inside. Season insiders. two, the girls got to know, you know, be you ready. Can't get for this it. anywhere else. Okay. Um, a few more things because <laughs> we only have so much time. Yeah, I gotta go do my show. Um, so we'll wrap things up here shortly. I want to ask you, first of all, I want to mention this to you, Claudia. Uh, Trishel Canatella, she was on, she just won Traders, real world back in the day, the challenge. We were doing an interview with her a couple months ago, and we were hyping up Deal or No Deal Island. Uh, it was me and Stephanie LaGrosa, and Trishel hadn't seen it yet, but she was interested. And we we're Stephanie's like, yeah, there's this girl, Claudia, and she was... Uh, she was a case girl on the OG Deal or No Deal. And Trishel's like, oh my gosh, I know Claudia. So you guys used to know each other back in LA? I think we did some stuff together back in the day. I can't, I'm old, so my memory, I... Yeah. I'm How like, old are you, Claudia? 51. If anyone can believe that. Yeah. Don't have kids, you guys. Because Check her out. <laughs> they age you. Just have a cat. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't remember what we did, but I, I, I didn't even put that together until you said it just now. So I need to send her a little congratulations about that because that is freaking awesome. And I've been hearing, of course, about traders like you should get on there. I'm like, eh, we'll see. But I got, I got, I got a lot of Hey, Claudia, you'd be good at it. Yeah, I have a poker face. Girl, I would be supporting you. It's just got to be when I'm not, it just can't be that time of the month. That's all. <laughs> you also got to compete on a, long time competition show that's no longer on the air for different reasons. The celebrity apprentice was a really fun show. How was that experience? That was a very, until this show, that was like probably one of the hardest shows I've ever done in my life. Um, the, the fact that you have 40, 48 hours to put on a high level event that takes months of planning and go against others that have unlimited resources. Like it's all about who you know on that show. So if you're friends with millionaires, I can just like say we have a fundraiser, we have to like build up a stand and sell cupcakes and sell cupcakes like as much as you can get for a cupcake. What friends can you call and say, hey, I need you to come buy a cupcake for five thousand dollars? Some of these people had Rolodexes where they could just call up, you know, Michael yeah. Strahan and be like, hey, come yeah. through or whatever. And you know, I was, you know, I raised some money on that show, but um, it was really, really hard. That show was very hard. Um, but I'm glad I did it though. I, 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 all these things are just, they just add to the fabric and the, the, the richness of my life. Yeah. You know, like it was an experience. Like, I know it sounds like I'm complaining. Yes. A little bit, but I'm so grateful that I got to do it. Like, this is something that I didn't think I could do. I did it, you know? Yeah. I didn't last the whole season, but you know, I mean, Hey, that's how the cookie crumbles. Can't win them all. No, you know what I remember? You mentioned that. I remember watching when Richard Hatch was on there, fellow Rhode Islander. Yes. He, in like the first episode, it was like they're doing so, they had so many of those celebrity ch charity events. And mm -hmm. it was like Richard um, contact people. And he's like, I was on Survivor. Like, I'm not a celebrity. Like, mm -hmm. I only have like a few people that I can call. And yep. I'd like to save those for when I'm the project manager. Yeah. And Trump was just so like nasty to him in the boardroom was like, Oh, like I believe you have so much more. And Hatch is just like, I don't. <laughs> um, but it always felt like he kind of had a weird thing where he treated the people that came from like entertainment, like who are musicians and then people from reality, he kind of looked down on. Did you feel that? Yeah. Well, he had a crush on me, so he was definitely going to treat me a little bit better. Hey, he loves the ladies. That's true. Yeah, he loves the ladies and he is definitely doesn't make a secret of it. He uh, he was nice to me back then. He really was. And I actually used to really like him. Um, yeah, it was disappointing to me that um, where we are now with it, because honestly, I feel like he plays a character to play to a base that the person that I knew wouldn't even want to be associated with some of those people that he's associated with now. That's not the guy that I, I would never be able to be friends with someone. And I was friends with him for years, you know, and um, I felt bad at first when I would criticize him and I, I stayed away from it. But then once he just started doing such ridiculous stuff, I, I had no choice. I had to be honest and keep it a buck. But 
I remember having, I went to his office one time with one of my friends, my friend Kelly, and we're in his office. And it was when he was running against McCain. And there was a picture of Sarah Palin's face on a naked girl, like a porn star's body with like really big implants. And I was like, I know you're not about to vote for them, right? And like, imagine if Sarah Palin is the VP and becomes president. And he was like, I like Barack Obama. He said, I like him. He said, I just, I'm really good friends with McCain. So I feel like I have to support my friend. And then to see that turn from that into this man is being so disrespected and saying that Barack Obama is not even an American citizen, that's playing to racist tropes. Like it's it's getting the racist rally. Yeah, get out of our country. Go back to Africa. Like that's what it, 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 you know, it gets people thinking like that. And I remember him telling me, I like him. And so when I saw the change to me, it was giving fake and I don't like fake people. It really is my number one thing I don't like because when you behave like that, I don't know who you are. And I don't know what I can trust. And when I don't know where, where you stand, I can't be around you. So I removed myself from his friendship circle when he started doing that. And I just was disgusted because I'm like, I can't believe I was really friends with this guy for years. I used to defend him. And then all the stuff started coming out about the things he did, like, being discriminatory to black renters back in the day. And I just was like, you know what? I'm done with this. And it sucks. It sucks because I saw a side of him that actually was a, a more compassionate person and fair. And this caricature, I, I swear, if he would be the person that I knew, he would be a way better option than what he's showing. Instead of pandering to the 30, 40 percent of people that would be the type of people that would storm the Capitol, you know, the kind of person that would say, hey, if your young girl daughter is raped, she should be able to have access to abortion. Not like the, some of these things are so ridiculous. Like I'm scared about this next election. I really am. And I know this isn't a political show, but that's kind of like my jam. I like love talking about. Oh, this yeah. No, I love hearing like you're in your. It's it's. We brought you on here to hear about you as well, and that was actually yeah, in your life. Yeah. I was like, oh, I could listen to this for a while. As a woman of color, as a black woman, it's very scary that the the steps that have been made by the Republican Party with taking away rights that have we have been comfortable with for years. And now they want to go up to civil rights. They want to go against LBGTQ marriages, like gay marriage. Why are we going backwards? And this is a country that we say, this is where the, the home of the free, the, the home of the brave and land of the free. Are we really, you know, and then taking away all these pro taking away black history in the schools in Florida. Yeah, that's, 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 that's crazy. Crazy. And, and But then propping up other histories. Which is like it's such a slap in the face. Black people are not we are, we are not immigrants. We have been we were born here after our ancestors were kidnapped and brought over here. So mm -hmm. like it, the to ignore the contributions of African Americans in this country and to just say you know make it a, a negative thing and to make this thing called woke a bad thing. Woke is waking up out of a sleep. It's not a bad thing, but it was high. Anyways, I know this is about dealing no deal. But I'm oh, but hey, but taking out black history out of the schools is just absolutely insane. But really, when you think about slavery and, and all the, the abuse that black, that's really not in the black history. That's white history. Yeah. It's yeah. Really what they did to others. Yeah. You know, it's black like, history is like, you it's know, our history. Is, is, is who actually invented more things. Like there's a bunch of black people who actually invented things that we use that the white people are saying that they created. And, and you know, we're, we're all here in America and it's like to make us feel like we don't even belong here. Like our history should not be, it's, it, it's very insulting. It's a very, and it's a very much a slap in the face. Well, it's not going to win. Let's hope that it doesn't win. Well, you know, it's very scary. I think people, they've done a fine, they've done a fine job of turning people off and the democratic party is horrible at messaging. They do not brag when they do good things. Like, Billions of dollars of, of student loans were just forgiven, and we never hear about it, but we hear about all the negative stuff. I, I'm nervous. I did see people get their forgiveness or whatever. A lot of people got it. I'm, so, I'm kind of. I'm, Claudia's got to run and do another show here, so let's end on a positive note. What's the uh, what's this, what's coming next, Claudia? And uh, social media handles all that. Good I stuff. got a couple scary movies, thrillers that I'm in. I play a very vicious person in two of them. One is called Trope. That's a horror film coming out this. Uh, I think around Halloween, yes. And then one's called Do It For The Gram, where my character's off the chain. And then, of course, my show, five days a week um, at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, TGIF. It's a hot topic show. And then I did College Hill. Right after I got back from Deal and Deal, I got offered this. College Hill, 
six celebrities go back to college. We go to an HBCU and we have to actually do all the classes. That was another month away from home. Super hard mentally, but I did get to get good food and I did have air conditioning. And uh, it was, a, <laughs> that comes out in June. I can't wait for y'all to see that. So yeah. I'm excited. It's going to be fun. Miranda, I'll be in Florida soon to come see you. Okay. We're going to Girl, have- you better. I'll- mm-hmm. Okay, Jack, anytime you want me to come back, let me know. Maybe after the finale, we talk about who won. Yeah, yeah the finale Sounds is Sounds good. Claudia, I'll be... I'll be in Fort Worth for a wedding in August, so. Hit me up. Let me know. Yeah, should be fun. Okay. May 13th. Thank you, Claudia. Bye. Bye, y'all. That was fun. Have fun, Claudia. All right, Miranda. We're going to wrap up here. Lots of fun today. What's your social media? Oh, we're still recording. (laughs) Sorry. No, my social media is at It's Miranda Rose Harrison. I made it pretty easy for everyone. Um, I think Twitter is It's at or at it's Miranda there's no rose in that one um I'm kind of new on TikTok so if you guys want to help build my following on there and I'll go from there and follow awesome. Jack the show <laughs> thank you Miranda well folks that concludes our conversation today with Miranda Rose Harrison and the Claudia Jordan it was so much fun getting to talk with her in greater detail hear her thoughts on the season so far Uh, Very enjoyable conversation. Very fun interview. We've got a lot more coming out soon. So in case you missed it, we had a recap with Brooke and Stephanie LaGrosa Kendrick joined us as a guest from, you know, the Survivor legend who just played Traitors and Snake in the Grass and was on Survivor three times is one of the biggest fan favorites that the show's ever had. Yeah, we had her on, which was a lot of fun. And she also co-hosted all the Traders podcast stuff with me, and she will do so in the future. So it's fun getting her thoughts on Dondi. We also just taped an interview. If it hasn't aired yet, it will come out soon. And that's with Jamil, who was the second person off this show, and Kim. Kim was on once again. We had them on to talk. Uh, It was a lot of fun getting the peek behind the curtain and just kind of hearing their thoughts and their experiences from being on Deal or No Deal Island, so that's a lot of fun. And then next week, we've got four exit interviews, one with each remaining member on the show. Everybody who's in the final four, there will be an exit interview. And then Brooke and I will also provide a, one last recap. Uh, it's here, all here on the Jack Vita Show. So if you aren't subscribed, make sure that you hit subscribe. Uh, you can do that here on YouTube. We're also on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever podcasts are found. Only about 80% of you guys that watch us are subscribed, so hit subscribe. Turn on those notifications. Leave us a comment. would love to know who you guys would like to hear from next. If you guys have any questions for the members of the Final Four, you can leave that here um, on the bottom of this video and uh, hit that like button. So we've got, again, lots coming up. You can follow me on social media, at Jack Vita Show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And until next time... I'm Jack Vita, bring in the dancing lobsters.